Hello. My name is Linus Sebastian, and I have not been held captive at Intel's headquarters since releasing a video stating I did not agree with Intel's direction for the X299 platform. But if that were the case, I'm sure Intel would have treated me very well. I would also like to go like to go on record as stating that in reference to my statements in that video that I that that I was that I stand by everything I said. I'm out of here. I'm busting out. Synergy allows you to share your mouse and keyboard between multiple computers at once. Check it out now at the link in the video description. Okay, so silly intro aside, obviously I have spoken to Intel since we made this video. I've expressed my concerns, and you know what? They're big boys and girls who can handle a bit of constructive criticism, so obviously we're still working together. X299 then. Let's do a short recap for those of you who didn't see our previous video. Intel's brand new Core i9 chips plug into motherboards with a brand new LGA2066 socket that's connected to a brand new chipset, X299, that features more updated I.O., more PCI Express lanes, and a four-lane DMI 3.0 link ooh, and finer overclocking controls. So pretty straightforward, more and more better. What's less straightforward, and how you take this is up to you, is that the socket now handles two separate generations of CPUs. The first, Skylake X, is about what you would expect. It's this year's enthusiast grade high core count processor based on last year's quad-core max consumer-grade processor. So, we get some fancy architectural improvements, we get Turbo Boost Max that bumps up two cores instead of only one, and finally, support for AVX 512 outside of Xeon. And the second is KB Lake X. In an attempt to appease hardcore overclockers, Intel basically took their consumer-grade KB Lake chips, disabled their integrated graphics processors, and glued them onto bigger packages with better power delivery characteristics and bigger heat spreaders. Intel hopes that these chips will be a boon to folks who don't have $1,000 for a Core i9 today, but want to have a solid upgrade path in the future. For my part, I feel like only being able to populate half of the RAM slots on a quad channel board and having PCI Express bandwidth potentially cut to less than half is a really confusing experience. Though, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments if you feel differently. But wait, what? Less PCIe bandwidth? I thought you said more. Okay, so for the top-end Core i9s, we actually get more than ever. 44 versus 40 on the previous flagship 6950X. Where that potentially less than half bit comes from is that anything other than a Core i9 gets far less, as few as only 16, which could affect the performance of demanding enthusiast features like SLI, 10 gigabit networking, M.2 RAID, or Thunderbolt 3. And on the subject of M.2 RAID, it looks like VROCK doesn't have pricing yet, and Intel actually isn't quite sure how they're gonna roll that out. But the good news is you can boot from NVMe RAID if it goes through the chipset without doing any of that stuff. It's only if it goes through the CPU that the VROCK module is gonna come into play. So let's get into benchmarks then. We, uh, unfortunately, 
didn't get a KB Lake X CPU in time for this video, but we did get the 10 core Core i9 7900X, the least expensive option with the full 44 PCI Express lanes. This, along with our nifty AF Asus Prime X299 Deluxe, some uh, overclocking elbow grease, all X200 compatible chips are unlocked, and some validated memory from G-Skill gives us our main test bench today. For comparison, we'll be looking at the Z270 based Core i7-7700K, our X99 bench featuring last gen's much more expensive 10 core, and while we don't have Threadripper yet, we've thrown AMD's Ryzen 1800X into the fray for comparison. So in gaming, there's clearly no major difference between any of our CPUs at 4K. 1080p tells a bit of a different tale, but frankly, none of this is a surprise. Clock speed is still king when it comes to games, and until properly implemented Vulkan and DirectX 12 games are commonplace, that isn't going to change anytime soon. As for productivity, this is cool. One interesting aspect of Skylake X's design is that it moves from relying heavily on a ton of level 3 cache to relying more on its higher speed level 2 cache. So where Broadwell E had 256 kilobytes of level 2 per core, Skylake X has a whopping 1 meg each, and the level 3 becomes what's known as a victim cache. So where one core might look for data in the level 3, find it isn't there, but in another core's level 2, where it can then get pushed to the level 3 cache. That leaves the most relevant cached data in the fastest cache more often, which results in some of the performance gains that we're seeing here, which is great, given how Core i9 is intended to be used in everything from high-end gaming rigs to high-end workstations. So, Core i9 7900X then. Great performance and compared to Broadwell E, great price. Great release then, right? In a vacuum, yes. But the elephant that hasn't yet entered the room is AMD's Threadripper. Intel is faced with the disadvantage of having shot first with X299, and AMD has some time to tweak their upcoming Threadripper CPU lineup which it said will be available with up to 16 cores and 64 PCIe lanes. So they could put the gears to Intel on pricing. At which time, Intel, whose 12, 14, 16, and 18 core models will be arriving between August and Q4 of this year, will have to figure out how to respond, if at all. So you know what? I am still frustrated that it took Intel this long to wake up. And I do still think that this CPU lineup is unnecessarily confusing. But whatever their motivation, AMD's innovation, or their unconditional love for enthusiasts, it is true. This is a great release because we're back to Intel and AMD playing leapfrog. And that is just great. Synergy solves once and for all the problem of having two keyboards and two mice at your desk. It lets you share a single mouse and keyboard between two or more computers, so you'll no longer confuse which one is for which. You just move the mouse across. They offer a basic and pro option with one-time payment for lifetime access, and they have tons of great features, like clipboard sharing between the computers, dragging and dropping files between them, the ability to set up hotkeys, and even the ability to use computers with different operating systems. We're talking Windows, we're talking Mac, we're even talking Linux. So use our link in the video description and get 50% off of Synergy today, or tomorrow, but don't wait too long. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, and maybe check out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is a link to our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join.